Hello and welcome to this British Psychological Society audio interview. I'm Wendy Barnaby and I'm joined by Elizabeth Kuypers, who's Professor of Clinical Psychology at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience at King's College London. And Elizabeth, you've just received an award from the Society, a Lifetime Achievement Award, which is a very impressive thing, so congratulations for that. We're going to be talking about something that goes back quite a long way in your career, I think, and that is about the relationships within a family where somebody has psychosis, and particularly how the carer gets on or not with the person with psychosis, and how that has an effect on the outcome for the service users. First of all, perhaps it might be useful just to understand a bit about what psychosis is. Psychosis used to be called schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is part of psychosis. And what we're really talking about here are people who have distressing and unusual experiences like hearing unpleasant negative voices and or who've got very unusual ideas which are not generally shared, like they're being followed or they're being threatened or they're in an imminent danger. And you'll tend to get these experiences at a kind of acute state and you may be very, you're often very upset by it and it's the people who are upset by these things who come to our services. We now know that nearly everybody in the general population will have moments when they might have unusual experiences but it's the clinical end of this where people are upset or where society is upset about what they're doing that come to our notice. So I'm talking about that condition which is a very serious mental health problem. It's still one of the more expensive ones that the NHS deals with because of all the care that someone might need and the range of care that someone might need over quite a long time. And I suppose one of the issues from my award is what can we do about this and what can psychology do about this? Well, it's really interesting because generally when we're talking about psychological intervention, we're talking about helping people with a condition. But in this case, we're talking about helping people who are looking after people with a condition and the resulting relationships and how all of that affects outcomes. So bring me up to date on where this work is at the moment and what you've come to understand working with families. Well, I think the first thing to say is that when you're catapulted into a caring role and nearly everyone suddenly finds that there's some crisis and they're having to provide much more care for a, another adult, you're often unprepared. And we now know that after 10 hours a week of that kind of care, there's a sort of step change in the effects on your well-being. And you as the carer are much more likely to feel it as a strain, an ongoing strain, particularly if it goes on for a long time, and to get depression and find it really difficult to cope. And so as a carer, you need support. You need information. You need to understand what you're dealing with. You need practical help very often. And you need emotional support, sometimes for many years. And so that's the kind of main message, really, that by doing the family work, we were trying right from the beginning to, to understand what the families might need and to give them what they wanted rather than sort of give them what was kind of in the literature at the time, which was very depressing. All the literature at that time in the mid-70s said, you can't talk to these people, they, they don't want to talk to you, and they won't engage with treatment because they're worried about what professionals will say, and nothing works. So it, one could only make things better, I always felt. <laughs> and you found that the outcome depends partially on the relationship between the carer and the person with psychosis? This was the early work from the mid-70s, which was looking, which colleagues of mine were finding that poor relationships predicted a poor outcome, even for schizophrenia, which at that time was not understood psychologically at all well. It was understood as a biological problem that really nothing much impacted on. So finding that the way you talk to someone and the way you dealt with things could have an impact on a really rather complicated problem was very interesting. And psychologically it was very interesting because if something's having an impact, you can probably do something about it. And that's where the thinking comes from. And that's why the carer needs support, presumably, it's so that they can have a better sort of relationship with the person they're looking after. 
Yes, because people aren't trying not to manage. They're finding themselves in a very difficult situation. Mental illness is very difficult sometimes to understand and, and know what you're dealing with. If you think of the mid-70s, there's no internet. You have to go to the library and, and you don't know what to look up. And there was also a, a kind of professional trick at that stage where we were all taught if somebody says, oh, well, what's the matter with my son? What's going on? You would say, well, what do you think? You were told not to kind of give an opinion because you had to find out about things and you would endlessly bat these questions back. And when I looked at the literature about um, how to help families like this, it was obvious that one of the reasons they were getting into arguments and getting cross about it was because they didn't understand what was going on. It was looking very much like some of the early problems you get, particularly at the beginning of a psychosis, can look like sort of difficult adolescent behaviour. If someone's not sort of functioning very well, they stop going to school or going to work, they, they kind of drop out of things, they might be having a lot of substances, and they just look as if they're sort of behaving badly and, and sort of getting in a mess because of that. And so people were very often thinking, the carers were thinking that that was their problem and they should sort of pull their socks up and sort it out. There was no information around at that stage. So one of the key things was to go and see the families with the service user there and answer questions, give them information. This was a time when nobody talked about diagnoses. You didn't talk about cancer. You certainly didn't talk about mental health diagnoses. You sort of tried to help people along as they were going. You never really discuss it. And it just seemed to be a key reason that people weren't managing the problems very well because they didn't know what they were dealing with. I mean, I think the main thing is just to answer people's questions. What do you need to know? Well, as far as we know, this is called this and it exists and it's a problem and this is why your son or daughter or partner is having this problem. It's not just that they're being difficult. And what proportion do you think of an outcome can be accounted for by the sort of relationship that exists between the carer and the service user? The figures are that even on medication, um, which most, most people with psychosis are, are on antipsychotic medication, um, you get about a 50% relapse rate in the nine months after they've come out, after they've had a recent episode, compared to about 22% in a different kind of family. So it's quite, and that's over that length of time. So w would you say that if the relationship was bad, there... It's <clears> not helpful. It's, no, <laughs> that's you I mean, say, really. it's, well, it's not helpful, but I mean, yes. it, it does mean that they are twice as likely to relapse as someone you're with a good relationship. Likely, you're more likely to relapse, yes, in the, in the immediate weeks. If you're going back to live in that environment where the, the, the family is not able to be supportive to you for whatever reason, it's more difficult to stay well. I mean, that was a nice thing to find because obviously the, the next step was to kind of, well, what do you do about it to help everybody cope differently with that? And the nice thing about the family work is that you're including the service user in the therapy. Now this was also revolutionary, you didn't, you didn't do that. <laughs> One of the things about psychosis is that you can feel very suspicious. You can feel that the whole world's conspiring against you, that your mother is putting poison in your food, or all sorts of terrible things be going on. And your voices can be telling you that you know, people are talking about you and all sorts of things. The last thing you want is to be having a secret meeting or a different meeting with the carer that the uh, service user can't be involved in. So that was the other thing we did, it seemed obvious at the time, was to do something open. And that's what you always need in this kind of work with psychosis, is to be very transparent. So this has really evolved into family intervention, which yes, this is, is family intervention. This is family psychosis. intervention yes. for psychosis, which yes. is now accepted as the way to do it. It's one of the recommended treatments from NICE, yes. And I think one of the reasons it's been helpful is that you're giving information and you are trying to facilitate that the whole family gets together and really talks and sorts out and problem solves and deals with whatever problems they've currently got. And you're getting the service user to tell the family what's going on inside their head. But of course, it's very hard to guess. And to tell and discuss with the family what they can do that might be more helpful and what is really not helpful. And then what they might all do over the next week, fortnight, to sort out whatever the current, very often very basic problem is. And it doesn't matter what the problem is because just getting the family to work together in a different way and find out that they can work together and it's not all going to go pear-shaped <laughs> seem to be the key about it. And it, can, it takes quite a long time. You're not going to go snap. These things are quite long-standing and you're getting people to change their patterns. You're getting people to listen to each other. But I think the good thing is that it's, it's opened the way to doing more individual work with psychosis and our understanding of psychosis is almost completely revolutionised over this time. And the most common treatment is the individual 
work. So it opened the way to a, a sort of different interest in this really difficult area, which has been very productive.